Here we discuss comparative efficacy of terzepatide, liraglutide, and semaglutide in reduction of risk of major adverse cardiovascular events in patients with obstructive sleep apnea and type 2 diabetes, real-world evidence, by researchers from the United Kingdom. Obstructive sleep apnea, or OSA, is a condition characterized by upper airway obstruction causing either sleep fragmentation and or oxygen desaturation. Type 2 diabetes is marked by insulin resistance and glucose intolerance. Unfortunately, OSA and type 2 diabetes can coexist and have bidirectional negative health effects. Both OSA and type 2 diabetes are independently associated with cardiometabolic abnormalities, and patients who have both are considered very high risk for major adverse cardiovascular events, such as acute coronary syndrome, stroke, or heart failure. Therapies such as glucagon-like peptide 1 or GLP-1 receptor agonists, for example, liraglutide and semaglutide, as well as the dual GLP-1 glucose-dependent insulinotropic polypeptide or GIP receptor agonist, for example, terzepatide, have offered more ways to treat obesity, type 2 diabetes, and now OSA. It remains unclear the exact impact the co-occurrence of OSA and type 2 diabetes has on the risk of adverse health outcomes and how these medications may mitigate or reduce these risks. To bridge the knowledge gap, researchers in the UK performed a comparative analysis of the relative impacts of terzepatide, liraglutide, and semaglutide on cardiometabolic health outcomes. Their aim was to assess the relative effectiveness of these medications in reducing major adverse cardiovascular events, or MACE, in patients with OSA and type 2 diabetes. The study was a retrospective analysis of data from patients living in both North America and Western Europe. With patients prescribed liraglutide or semaglutide as reference groups, the researchers compared clinical outcomes to patients who were prescribed terzepatide. Patients with type 1 diabetes or previous cardiovascular events were excluded from the study. The cohorts were matched for factors age, sex, ethnicity, smoking status, socioeconomic status, body mass index, hemoglobin A1c, presence of other conditions such as kidney dysfunction or hypertension, and medications. Researchers assessed rates of major adverse cardiovascular events over 18 months. Results indicated that terzepatide significantly reduced the risk of major adverse cardiovascular events compared to the other therapies, lowering the risk by 42% compared to liraglutide and 14% compared to semaglutide. When comparing terzepatide to liraglutide, terzepatide was more effective overall irrespective of age, BMI, sex, ethnicity, adherence rates, or geographic location. When comparing terzepatide to semaglutide, terzepatide offered improved benefit in patients who were younger, less than 60 years old, white, obese, with a BMI over 30, and adherent to therapy. When analyzing the cohorts together, terzepatide appeared to be more effective in reducing major adverse cardiovascular events in younger, under 60 years old, white, and male patients. Terzepatide showed that it was better than liraglutide in reducing OSA. Terzepatide did not show superiority when compared to semaglutide. Given the increasing global public health burden of OSA, type 2 diabetes, and cardiovascular disease, these findings offer important new insights that may help patients live better. More research is needed to better understand these findings and to clarify the utility of liraglutide, semaglutide, and terzepatide in treating patients with both OSA and type 2 diabetes. For more details, please read the article by Dr. Henny and colleagues. Thank you for watching Annals Animated.